Hi, this is Miss Delosier, and these are your notes on proteins. Um, proteins are the most structurally and functionally diverse group of macromolecules, and they're actually the group of macromolecules that we're going to spend the most time talking about this year because they're pretty much involved in everything. So um, let's talk about the different functions that proteins can have. So first off, all, all the enzymes that we're going to talk about this year, enzymes are proteins. So an enzyme, we're going to have a whole separate set of notes on enzymes, but uh, enzymes are proteins, okay? So an enzyme is a protein. It's got a specific shape. It does a specific job, either building something or breaking something down. Um, the examples that we're going to talk about the most in class are catalase, DNA polymerase, uh, lactase, because I'm lactose intolerant, and ATP synthase. Now, what do you notice about all of those enzymes? Well, they all end in ACE, um, and that's how we know that something's an enzyme. So proteins that end in ACE are enzymes, and normally their name tells you something about what they do, like lactase breaks down lactose sugar. Um, so that's enzymes. The next thing that we need to um, talk about with proteins is that they are structural. They provide structure to the body. So collagen, um, keratin, just to name a few. So like your hair, like uh, the filler proteins that actually provide shape to your cells, those are all proteins. Um, microtubules, microfilaments, and your cytoskeleton, those are proteins. Um, so those are structural. Proteins are also involved in the transportation of things on an organismal level and on a cellular level. So on an organismal level, hemoglobin is how we transport oxygen around the body. On a cellular level, protein channels allow um, certain molecules to move through the cell membrane. So you, you all learned about uh, protein channels in the cell membrane when you took Bio 1. So that's involved in transport. We also need to talk about cell-to-cell -cell communication. Now, we haven't talked at all about this in class, but cell-to-cell -cell communication is how one cell or a molecule outside a cell is going to go ahead and trigger a reaction in another cell. So in cell communication, you're going to have a signal molecule, and that signal molecule could, in fact, be a protein. Um, so hormones, like insulin is a hormone that is that is actually a protein hormone and it triggers a response by the body right that's a signal molecule but you could also have receptors that are proteins and we'll talk about specific receptors on the cell membrane um, inside the cell that are floating in the cytoplasm that are receptors that trigger different pathways in, in metabolism and then we also need to talk about antibodies. We're going to do that. Um, that's a whole separate unit. So antibodies, the way that your body actually defends itself against uh, pathogens, like it recognizes specific antigens and produces antibodies. Well, those antibodies are basically protein tags. And so you have to be able to make those proteins. And then movement. Obviously, your muscle cells they're going to be made of actin and myosin. You're going to have actin and myosin fibers, and those actin and myosin fibers are proteins. Um, so there's there's a ton. There's a ton of different structurally and functionally different proteins, and we're going to talk about a lot of them. So let's talk about how a protein is actually built. So we're going to build proteins by taking um, monomers. Uh, of the and, and forming what we call a, a polypeptide. So a polymer, the protein polymer is called a polypeptide and we'll talk about why it's called a polypeptide in a second. The monomers of a protein are amino acids, right? And there are 20 um, there are 20 amino acids and uh, we can make a lot of the amino acids but we can't make all of them. So most of these amino acids you're getting through your diet. Some of them you're taking in certain amino acids and then you're synthesizing them. Amino acids have an amine group and they have a carboxyl group. And let's go ahead and review that even though we've done it together already in class. So this is the structure of a generic amino acid. And yes, I am missing a bond there. I, I'm aware of that. Um, so my amine group is this NH2 on the left-hand side, and my carboxyl group is this 
um, C double bond OOH on the right hand side. So that is my amino acid. That's why we call it that. Now this is a polar molecule. Okay, the, the amine group carries a positive charge and the carboxyl group is negatively charged. So, um, so this, this is going to go ahead and create some interactions between them. So let's look at the missing bond because I have a missing bond, right? So that is going to be my functional group. Um, and I represent the functional group with just the letter R. Uh, I will try and always circle the functional group when we're talking about it generically so you know that it's not, there, there's no atom on the periodic table that's an R. Um, so R, there's my functional group, right? So that's a generic amino acid. The only thing that's different between the 20 different amino acids is what is hanging off in that R position. Um, so let's, let's look at an example of actually taking two amino acids and putting them together. So I'm going um, I'm to form a polypeptide. I'm going to do this by taking two monomers, putting them together, removing a water dehydration synthesis, right? So I'm going to take my amino acid. Um, and this one, if you notice, my functional group is just an H, so that's glycine. And I'm going to add to that this amino acid. Um, and here I have a CH3, uh, and that is an alanine. Okay. So I'm going to take my glycine and my alanine, I'm going to remove a water, and then I'm going to uh, take that extra carbon covalent bond, because carbon needs to form a covalent bond there, and it's going to actually bind to that nitrogen where I removed the hydrogen. And that is what I call a peptide linkage. That's the type of bond it is, right? So when I say that a protein is a polymer, is called a polypeptide. It's called a polypeptide because basically I'm taking an amino acid and I'm hooking it to another one through a peptide linkage, so it's a polypeptide. Um, so that's, that's how you're going to build your protein chains. Um,